So in this video, we're gonna be creating a render for a Kickstarter called Rider. It is a card game where you cast aside all honor of memory, strategy, and after some time, some skill. It's a game that's set in wizards and knights and D&D stuff. <clears throat> but in this tutorial, we're gonna be going through modeling of the box, setting up the cards, the materials of the cards, setting up the card stack, the materials for the box, the materials for the label on the box, and lighting and the camera. So come join me, let's have a look and let's just kind of like smash through it. So straight off the bat, what I'm gonna do is import all those images. So let's go file, import images as planes. If you don't see that, edit preferences, type in image, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, enable that. So let's go find all our images, import images as planes. There we go, I know I need to delete that one. I'll leave the default cube, no, nope. delete the default cube and then re-add the cube. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this box roughly the same size as the card. So if I press numpad three to go into side view, Z four to go into wireframe, let's just press tab to go into edit mode, select everything with A, and I'm just gonna scale it so it's roughly the same size. There we go. Let's now press tab once again. Now it's a little bit too long, so I'm just gonna scale with S on X. Nice, so that's roughly a good size that I want. I wanna set the origin point down here in the bottom left hand corner and that just makes it a little bit easier for rotating and putting it on the floor and so on and so forth. So let's select that, shift S, cursor to selected, tab to go into object mode, object, set origin to 3D cursor. And so now origin point for the box is there in the corner. If I now go Alt G to reset the location, I've now got that in the center point. Now let's go ahead and start making the shape of the box. Now what I wanna do is kind of cut this box in half. So it's kind of like as if there is a flap. So I probably could just do control R, left click, and then right click to recenter it. Then we've got this section. And I'm just thinking that's not gonna work. What I actually might do is I'm gonna go delete vertices. So now we've just got either side of the box from here and here, shift left click on both of them. I'm gonna press F to create a face. Let's select this, these two sides in here, or these four, edges, E to extrude, and then right click to put that back in place. Let's go scale on the Y axis. So they come into the middle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale along the X axis. So we've kind of got this indent of a flap. So just picture it almost being UV unwrapped as if it is printed. But from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select these two edges, E to extrude, right click to put them back in place. Let's go G, X, and we will just put that kind of like there-ish, okay? So what this gives us is kind of a box, pretty much, with its flap open. Um, what I am gonna do is I am going to, actually, we'll put it on both sides, just in case we wanna change the orientation. Now with both those sides collected, I can press G and G, and then it'll move along the normals. And I'm just gonna add it right on the edge there, scale Z to bring it up. And now what that's gonna look like is that this piece of paper here is kind of folded in. And I might just do the same on here, scale on the Z axis, just a smidgen. There we go. So we've kind of got a little bit of a gap in there. From here, what I can do is I can just select all these edges, making sure I'm selecting the edges of the box, like so. Control B to do a bevel. And I'm just gonna just do something a little bit like that. That's looking good. I'm gonna put an edge loop on this side and an edge loop on this side. Shift left click on them. Let's go G, sorry, scale, scale Z and bring it up a little bit. From here, I'm gonna press Control B to do a bevel and just add in a few extra loop cuts in there. What I can do from here is I kind of want to give it as if it's got a little bit of damage. So I can shift right click. I'm just going to add some extra edge loops in here. I'm going to select this vertice here. Now, if I press O for proportional editing and GZ, we can see that everything in the circles are being affected, but I don't want the underneath bit to be affected. So what I can do is come up into the proportional editing and how much is being affected. I want to tick on connected only. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna only affect these vertices coming around and then it'll come back around. So if I go GZ, you can see now that we're only really affecting them. What I do wanna do is I just wanna go GZ and just lift it up just a smidgen. 
Um, give it a little bit of those imperfections. So it's not a perfect box. I am gonna leave it as a plain. I mean, we can do give it a little bit of thickness for a cardboard, but I'm not gonna be too fussed with that. So from here, I'm gonna press space to search and just type in smooth, shade smooth. The other option I can do is right click and shade smooth. And now from here, we're gonna go and work on these cards. So I'm just gonna grab all these cards. G, X, rotate X, sorry, Y, 90 degrees. And if we go into material mode, let's have a look. They appear to be facing the right way, which is good. So let's go GZ. I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode. And then what I'm gonna do is just go E to extrude down the Z axis ever so slightly, just to give the cards some thickness. It's not very thick, but there is thickness there. Now what I'm gonna do is just quickly kind of just lay them out, lay them out, sorry. Something like this. Rotate, G, rotate. And the reason why I'm doing it naturally like this, or sorry, manually like this, is because I don't want the cards to be kind of perfect. I want that fake element. What I'm gonna do now is come into side mode. Yep, I got that one selected. Let's just go GZ, and then it's that one's sitting just on top of that one. This one here will sit just a little bit on this one. This one here, GZ, a little bit more. And then last but not least, this one over here, just a little bit higher. Um, let's go Shift S and I'm just gonna, oops, sorry. Let's go Shift S, cursor to world origin, Shift A, mesh plane. And I'm just gonna kind of just make a table. Now what we want to do is make sure that these are sitting just above the table. We know that the table is on the origin point. So I can go GZ and just have it sitting like that. Now, if we go into material mode, we can see that we're getting some weird issues where the cards are actually kind of like see-through. That's no good, is it? Uh, so what I can do from here is let's select one of our cards. We'll go into shading and let's come over into material. I'm gonna change the blend mode from alpha blend to alpha hashed and shadow mode from opaque to alpha hashed. And now we don't have that issue anymore. So like with this one here, we can see that there is an issue. Let's go into material all the way down, alpha hashed, alpha hashed. And I'm just gonna quickly do the rest of them. Now, the other thing is these cards are very picturesque, the pictures. So I'm just gonna select one. The first thing I'm gonna do is go shift S search, add a, sorry, noise texture. Now these squares that you can see above here, this is from the node preview add-on. There is a link in the description if you wanna have a look at that. What I wanna give the cards is kind of like a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna use this noise texture. Now I'm gonna bump it up to about 400. Seems pretty good. Let's go search and I'm going to add in a color ramp because I wanna kind of change the values a little bit. So we can see that we've got very much polka dotty, but what I want is I want just kind of like a whole bunch of little white spots. To me, that looks quite nice. And then from here, let's throw the color into the specularity. And I want color into roughness. However, the roughness is the wrong way around and it's actually making it a bit shiny. So I'm gonna go Shift S, let's go search and put in invert the color and we'll place it there. And now you can kind of see that there's a bit of speckly kind of texture on the cards. Just give it like that little bit of how it's printed, I guess. Whoops, color into color. Sorry, my mistake. Thought why that was a little bit wrong. Yeah, there we go, that's much better. It's not shiny, but it's got this these white dots on it, kind of like where it's raised. And you can kind of just see the difference between the cards. And I much prefer this one here. So I'm gonna quickly replicate that across all five cards. And the way to do that is I can just select these, Control C, Control V. I know this one goes into roughness and specularity goes into there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let me just quickly do that for all of them. And there we have it, I'm fairly happy with that. Now with the rider card up here as well, I'm gonna do that. Let's just quickly set up this material and let's go blend mode, alpha hashed to alpha hashed. Now let's go ahead and create our stack of these cards in the background. So with the cards selected, let's go into modifiers. Oops, let's go into layout, maybe make life a little bit easier. Modifiers, add modifier. We're gonna go into the array. 
rather than going along the X, we'll change that to zero. We're gonna go Z one, and then let's go 250. That's big deck, 400. Why not? Let's live a little. However, this is still one object. So what I can do now is control A to apply a modifier over here. And then if I go tab into Ed mode, you can just see how many layers we've got. I can select everything. I can press P, separate by loose parts. So now we can see that we've got 400 cards here. Beautiful. However, they all have the same origin point. So in object mode, I can go object, set origin to geometry. And now you can see we've got a nice long list of cards. I'm gonna select one random card, come into proportional editing at the top and change the type of proportional editing to random. So now what I can do is go rotate Z, something like, you know, just a little bit like this, G to the X. Uh, let's select another one, G to the Y, G to the X, and let's go rotate. And there we go. So we've created this kind of stacked decked, which isn't proper, but it's all right. So let's now go do our material on our box. So this one, I'm gonna do two ways. So the first way I'm just gonna use an add-on, second way we will do it manually. So if I press N, let's go to extreme PBR combo, asphalt, we'll change the paper and we'll keep this one, map kit, roughness, specularity, or normal specularity. Let's go add new and let's come into shading. Now I know with this add-on, I haven't updated it, which has been very naughty of me. I know I have to move the alpha into the normal. There we go. And so now we've got a very nice paper texture. We've got an issue up here. I can press tab, select everything, U, and I'm gonna get a cubic projection. And now we can't really see, but everything is UV unwrapped nicely. Now I do wanna change the color of this box. So what I can do is come up into this extreme hue sat. Let's bring down the value to about 0.95, sorry, 0.05. So we get a nice gray box on there. So that's pretty much the material that I'm going for. However, how do we do it manually? Boop. So I did a video on the website Unsplash, which has royalty free images. Um, you can use it for commercial license, blah, blah, blah. So if you wanna see videos like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you want those little tidbits, I grabbed a picture of paper. Uh, I think it was this one over here, right click, save picture as. Let's go new material, shift A. I'm gonna add an image texture, open. Go to where my picture is, open image. And if I were to plug that directly into base color, you would see that we've got our paper color. Now, this isn't exactly what I want because I want a gray. So I'm actually not gonna take the color information. What I'm actually going to do is take the bump or the black and white information from here. So what we wanna do is we wanna create something with the normal. So I'm gonna go search and I'm gonna add in a bump, boop, color into height, normal into normal. And you'll see that it's pretty stinking bumpy. Let's change that to maybe 0.1. And then from here, I'm gonna remove that base color. I'm going to add in a color ramp and we'll put that one in there. Color goes into the factor. Factor goes into the specularity and the roughness. And I'm just gonna bring these two colors in just to really extenuate, is that a word? The kind of the glossy and the roughness. So from here, let's change this base color to our dark gray. And you can see that we have our kind of texture on here. We might make it a little bit dirtier, 0.2. There we go, so now it's that little bit more stronger bump. Now, getting the label on here, what I can do is I'm just gonna go Alt-R to reset the rotation. Let's go G to the Y, rotate Z 90 degrees, rotate X, sorry, Y 90 degrees, scale. And I'm gonna kind of roughly put it where I want it on the box. So just down the below, bottom here, something like that, GX. Now, rather than lining this up, what I'm actually gonna do is add a modifier. I'm gonna go shrink wrap and we will target the box and it'll project itself directly onto the box. You can see though, it's got a little bit of an artifact. 
So I'm just going to set the offset just a smidgen, just so it's sitting off. So I can go maybe 0.001 and it's sitting directly above. The other thing as well is I can grab this photo, Alt G to reset the location just to bring it a little bit closer. Rotate X, Y 90 degrees. It's got me twice now. And we will dump that in here. There we go, nice. From here, we'll do the same thing. Shrink wrap onto this box. There we go. Um, yep, change the offset to 0.001. One last little bit of information is that if I were to move the box, we get this craziness effect. That's not what we want. So make sure you select both images and the box last. Control P to parent to object. And now we can select the box, move it around and all that jazz and the images stay there. Now, the other thing I want to do is I kind of want to have this as a bit of a glossy material. So I do want it a little bit more, hmm, more shinier, I guess. So I'm actually going to bring the roughness down and on this picture as well, I'm going to bring the roughness down. So if I go into rendered view, it's going to be a little bit more glossier here. No, in rendered view, I don't really like that cupboard, Cup, cupboard, cardboard. So let's bring that back to maybe down to 0.1 just to have that subtle effect. Yeah, that's a bit better. Um, ooh, and we can see here that these cards aren't sitting on the bottom. So let's kind of just line them back up. GZ, bring that down. Nice. From here, let's go into layout. I'm just gonna set up a lighting. Let's go shift A, image, sorry, area, G to the Z. GZ, and I'm just gonna do this in rendered view. Let's get rid of that light, select this one. I'm always turning on contact shadows. Um, let's bring this up to about 200 watts. From here, I'm gonna bring this one over. Let's kind of rotate it around, rotate XX. So it's kind of on this direction now, and we might just give it a blue tinge. And we might just grab this one, Shift D, rotate 180. And rather the blue tinge, let's go a red tinge. And now with setting up the camera, rotate Z. Oops. F12. That is looking pretty schnazzy. I really like it. Hopefully you guys like it as well. It's just going to quickly turn on ambient occlusion, screen surface refraction, screen space refraction. And there we have our finished product. Now, obviously you could probably bring these cards in a little bit more and, you know, redo it. But if you found this video helpful, please make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Also check out the Kickstarter for Ride of the Card Game. And as well, check out Deadset Digital where I'm posting daily shorts. Mm. So yes.